Next game up, High Rollers versus Violators. We're going to talk about High Rollers as they debut their new starting quarterback, former YMM quarterback, Nelson. This is a good pickup. Nelson didn't have a great year last year. He had a decent year. 13 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, was not sacked 9 times. But he took his team all the way to a championship. Yes. He played great in that championship. He showed he should be mentioned in elite quarterbacks. Yeah. And now he gets to play with high rollers where he don't have the pressure of, you know, Rico or Jeremy yelling at him, but he also going to miss their playmaking also. And one thing that he has to understand too is when you're on a new team after, you know, getting to a championship, you got to play at that high level. Regardless of what, you have to show why you were that type of quarterback, how, why you made it that far, and playing on another team, just I think it put that much, a, a little bit more pressure on you to perform at a high level because you got to show consistency when you're playing at a high level regardless of what team you play on. That's what, uh, what elite means. You also have Rubio, former Dem Getters player. Yes. With high rollers. Los, former Dem Getters player, playing with high rollers. Mestre, underrated guy, mm -hmm. playing with high rollers. So they got some players on the scene. Yes. We got to see how that works out now that the U is coming back to the league. Mm. Is Mestre staying there? We don't know. Rubio played with underrated. Is Rubio is staying there? Is he going to stay there? Which I think he would because yeah. Los is his man. But that's uh, another story for another It's a day. couple of guys on their team that may leave to go back to the U, you know. So... At the end of the day, it just depends on what team they choose to go on and how they're going to look from here on. And then you got Violators. Violators made it to the second round last year. Had an MVP, Macho, and the league MVP, and most improved player. Mm -hmm. But they had a little situation that to do it, which was we had Light through a punch last year. Mm hmm he was suspended the rest of the playoffs, and he suspended four games this year. And because of the brothers' keeper rule, yeah, they also lose one of their top players. And the player chose was Herbie. Yes. So Herbie wasn't allowed to play today. He didn't come to the field to make his debut this season after being away for a year injury yes. from a knee injury the year last year. He missed all last year, and this this year when he's supposed to play against a good team, he wasn't able to because of the mistake that happened from Light and the brothers keep it Yes, and regardless of what the issue was, and um, I respect the violators honoring the suspension, still coming in, allowing Herbie to st sit out for a game, still coming to play. You know, this is a team that we've been seeing play in our league for a long time, so they're pretty much one of our, our I would say it's fair to say, original teams in our league. So they're out here to win a championship no matter where they play on, and they came within a catch to going to a championship last year. You know, so that's something, another well, thing to talk about. I don't know about championship. Well, they would have beat Super Friends and then they would have Well, I'm talking about Carver. the conference championship, right. I mean. You know, they were within a catch to make it to play Carver in the conference championship. So there's a lot of ambition for this team. They're looking to move forward. And also, Violators debut their new quarterback. Yes. There's no more threat throwing. They got loot. Grind time, Lou, throwing for them. And Lou has stepped out the shot. There's no more Chuck's son, Lou. Yeah. It's Lou. Yes. Because this guy has won chips on his own, mm -hmm. and he showed that he's the next coming of quarterbacks coming in, in touch football. And this is an exciting matchup, um, even though we didn't put it up front, to see Lou face off with Nelson, you know, the next young gunners of TFL. These guys are still young. I I, um. I can't confirm how old Lou is, but I know Nelson is 25. So these guys are just getting their stride going. You have Lou already winning championships, and you have Nelson being in the dance multiple times. So these guys are ready to prove you, who is the better quarterback, and this is the best way to show it off in this game. So let's get the game started. Third down, Nelson gets sacked by G. Great play by G, showing his ability to play ball giver linebacker, whatever's necessary. He's also reigning block of the year, but he's doing it on defense. Third down, Nelson on four rush, throws a mess straight in the middle, knocked away, turnover now, giving violators back to the ball, quick defensive stand. And right here, this is the first drive here, and violators are not having it. They're not getting um, the violators to get 
They're not getting the high rollers. If any chance of getting anything going, they're playing tough defense. Um, G is getting in the face of Nelson and keeping anything from going on this offense so far in this drive. Great defense by the Violet. First down, Lou gets sacked by Wock. Wock, the former quarterback of them getters, playing with high rollers. And I want to see how it works once Nelson starts to struggle. Is there going to be a call for Wock? Will we be talking for Lord Wock? We'll see if there's a quarterback controversy. Because you know what I say, if you really have two quarterbacks, then you really got none. Third down, Lou throws to no more in the middle for a decent game. Fourth down, Lou on four rush, throws a march in the end zone, knocked away, turnover downs, great stand by high rollers, turning the ball over, giving it back to the offense. Well, if the Violators can step up and play defense, then I see the high, the, the high rollers are going to do the same thing. They're not giving any, both defense are not giving any of these quarterbacks a chance to get anything going. They're young, but that doesn't mean that they're going to let anything slack and give them any easy opportunities. Both defenses are playing hard right off of the first drive. After getting the first down, Nelson throws the Messer in the middle. Messer with a great catch on a low pass. Nice game. The old man showing he still got a lot left. And don't call him old man because he makes plays. Third down, Nelson gets blitzed by Macho, who's blocked by Los. Nelson with a nice pass to Tim in the end zone for the touchdown. Lou gets beat on the sideline, 6 0. Lou's a good quarterback. I don't know about defender. It's disrespectful to put him on Tim, and Tim makes him pay for it. Nelson sees the mismatch, makes a great throw. And one thing you got to give credit to is Los by picking up the, bl the yep. blitz by, from Macho. Macho's pretty much made his name known from coming in on the blitz and playing in the middle. So he comes and Los is able to pick it up, giving Nelson the time that he needs to get to him the ball on that pass there. That is just great all around offense by the high rollers. Third down, Lou throws the G wide open and sign up for a nice game in the first down. Last down and goal, Lou scrambles, throws a no look pass to Macho in the corner end zone for the touchdown, 7-6, violates the lead. And this no look pass, I think gotta be a top five play nominee because he hit him with a no look and is able to find his receiver. And this isn't a, even though I would say he's getting to that, getting to that level of elite, you know, he's still working towards it. This is an elite play right here. Only elite quarterbacks make pass passes like this. No look, looking in the middle of the field and then still throws it to the corner of the end zone where Macho's sitting there wide open, not telegraphing his pass and giving Macho opportunity to make an easy play here. That is an impressive play. Both of these quarterbacks, so you know, they got their stride going in the second drive and now they're moving, now they're facing off. At, on, on both sides. Third down, Nelson on forward, shakes the giver, runs a nice game. Nelson got speed, you gotta pay attention to that. Last down, Nelson gets blitzed by Yomi. Throws it up, it's picked off by G, giving the ball back to violators, but the giver gets flagged for rushing early, rebound on, um, down over. Now what usually happens when you see a penalty? They take advantage on offense. Nelson on four rush is gonna throw it up to Tommy. Tommy with the great catch, in the back of the end zone, and when you see it, I see it. And what that means, that means you, you got, got Moss. Moss. That's uh. a great play by Tommy. Lose with the extra point, taking this into the half, 13-7. And when I say this game is picked up after the first drive on both sides, both teams are hitting each other, both teams are attacking each other here. You see the Violators make a big defensive play, but their giver gives up the play by gun rushing in too early. That is, a, um, that is a big mistake when you give the opportunity for the quarterback to get a second chance. He throws up a decent pass to give his, his receiver a chance to get it. Tommy looks like he's by himself. Nobody else is there, even though like there was five guys around him, and he makes a play. What a great catch, catch by Tommy. And that's going to take us into the half. Violators coming together, trying to play defense. They're short. Herbie's not there. You know, so because Herbie's not there, Lou has to play defense. They pay for that, but Lou is showing the ability that we can do with this offense. Once he gets more comfortable, this kid is going to be trouble. Great play by them. He gets stopped one time, but he's able to throw a no-look touchdown, and they got, they're going to try to sort of, uh, to put more points up in this game. And one thing I got to say about Nelson's heart, it, this kid has so much heart to the point where after they had that penalty or whatever, they were going to just say, you know what, why even take a chance? Let's go into the half. Nelson argued with this guy and said, no, I'm going for it. I want to take this opportunity. We got this. He throws that pass. He gets the play made. Um, he gets the ball to Tommy. And even after an extra point, the swagger yeah. are out there showing that, listen, he's out there. He's here to make plays. He's made to make something happen. This is the heart that this kid has. And he's showing it no matter what team he's on, he brings that to the high road. Second half, we're going to have Valdez with the ball. 
Third down, Lou throws deep to number 80 for a huge game, picking up the first down. Next play, Lou going to get blitzed by Menstre. Scramble, but get sacked by Watt. Watt got speed. I'll tell you that's one thing. Guy got speed, and Lou's not going to be able to outrun him. Watt with the big sack here. Third down, second down, Lou throws a Yomi wide up in the back of the end zone. It's going to be dropped. Def definitely not a play that you expect by an all-star. Last down, Lou throws a Yomi in the back of the end zone. Knocked away by Tim, turnover on down, and Yomi has to make this catch. This guy's been in an all-star game ever since he got in the UFL. Doesn't make a catch here. Well, I'm going to go even further. I think I'm going to nominate this play as a not top five. It's got to be because this is a routine catch by you that, that Yomi would make in his sleep. And all of a sudden in this game, he drops that pass looking like an amateur out there. So you got to give this a not top five. Yomi dropping a pass like that, definitely not top five. High rollers can't move the ball. They're going to have to punt. Lou gets the ball back for the offense. Third down, Lou throws short to G with two blocks from Yomi. Runs for a big gain in the first down. Great block by Yomi, good moving by G. Second down, um, second down, Lou gets blitzed by Menstre. Throw the receiver in the gap, incomplete. Give a rush early, we play it down. Lou then throws the number eight in the back of the end zone. He's gonna make the catch, foot is on the line, incomplete pass. And if you look at this, that's a great call by the official. He's standing right there. Receiver doesn't know he's out on the field. Great throw by Lou, but that's another messed up play by the receiver. I mean, you got to give it to Lou. That was an accurate throw. He was open there, but unfortunately, the receiver is not able to know exactly where his footing is. And he just steps out of bounds and excited of his foot here. The, 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 the ref is sitting right there, so there's no way he's going to miss that call. That is a great call there, showing that he's out of bounds. That's unfortunate for the violators. Last down, Lou throws a no more wide open end zone. No more bobbles the ball before landing out of bounds. Then he lands out of bounds as he got it back. Turnover on downs. No more. Another guy who made the All-Star team was a starter. I believe two seasons ago. Yes. I was upset with this call. You can't bobble that. He bobbles the ball. When he gets it back, it's out of bounds. They just gave up two scores. Yomi with the drop before. This receiver number 87 on the line. And now no more on the same drive. Bobbling the ball out of bounds. You can't do that. You brought Louie to put a point. Yeah. He's trying to do that, and you're shooting him. So I guess maybe the brothers, the Clutch brothers, yes. are not really Clutch. They I really was just about to say that, too. You took those words from me. The thing about it is we labeled them. We gave them the name Clutch Brothers because that season they were playing Clutch for their offense. Right now, it seems like both of these guys are they're not enough brothers. <laughs> <laughs> Call them that. Wow, I don't think they're going to like that. But listen, it is what it is. You see it on camera. You can't lie about it. Both of them are dropping past that they should be making this sleep. And because of that, they are killing Lou's game right here. And they're keeping themselves from winning this game. Third down, Nelson throws him Tommy wide open in the middle for a decent game in the first down. Nelson on four rush runs for a decent game, killing the clock. Third down, Nelson throws a Tommy in the corner of the end zone, off target, incomplete. Last down, Nelson throws a Tim in the back of the end zone. Incomplete, turnover on downs, but they killed a lot of clock giving it back to the violin. And right here, I don't think they're really killing themselves to try to make anything happen on offense. They trust their defense enough to lock up, and they, they're wasting time on the clock to give the violators the, the, um, to take away the opportunity from the violators from making anything happen on their last drive coming up. Violators get the ball back. Second down, Lou goes to G in the gap for a nice game, pick up the first down. That's going to take you to the last play of the game. Lou tosses up, incomplete pass, 13-7, tie rollers with the win on a debut day. And when I say um, out of the, both of these quarterbacks, I think that Nelson came up with the win here, and he played. He did his job for his team. I think they should have they should have scored a little bit more, but when it counted, Nelson kind of made things happen, at least in the first half, right. you know. He had the opportunity just to let the half go, let the game go, and just take it on and um, keep going in the second half. But he said no. He took the opportunity to make something happen towards the end of the first half, and I think that was the difference maker for the game for them. I think it's a great game. Mm -hmm. Two young quarterbacks. Yes. I think Lou outplayed Nelson in this game. Yeah. One of Nelson's touchdowns. I'm not going to argue up, with that. But Nelson played good. Remember, Nelson doesn't know these guys. Yeah. So... Nelson got the win, but I think Luau played him. They left points on the board. Yeah. Nomar and Yomi have to make these plays. Now, number 80, I'm sorry. Once we get everybody's name, we're going to know who that was. Yeah. He stepped on the line, but at least he caught the ball. Yeah. Nomar bobbled it, went out of bounds, and Yomi just playing drop. 
You got to play the game to win. And if you're not going to play the game to win, step off the field. These two guys, I would never question their heart because they're going to give you everything they got. But you got to make plays. They had the balls in their hand. They had an opportunity to make a plays, and they didn't, and they cost violators again. And dare I say, I think for Yomi, this is something that you know, never see happen, him dropping passes. Maybe it's because he's been spending too much time at the quarterback position, you know, that he's gotten rusty as a receiver, as a tight end. Possibly. And maybe that is the difference maker so far. I think that he's going to pick up where he left off being a top um, tight end type receiver, whatever. But at this point, I think that this was rust from playing quarterback a little too much. Not to say that he shouldn't, but that's what happens when you haven't played in a position for so long. You're rusty and he shows here. Well, we're going to take our next break, go into the last game, which is going to be live. We'll be right back. Real Tough Talk. Adi, what do you think is going to happen with that? You already mentioned it before, but you get to mention it again live. Well, one thing about this team that I got to say right off the bat is consistency is something that you got to talk about when you say you got to use when you refer to this team. But that's a good thing and a bad thing. They're consistent in that they, they play well throughout the regular season. They're consistent also in that they make it to the same level in the playoffs and always lose before getting to the championship. That's the type of consistency you don't want. And I think that they were looking for Adi to be that person to help them get over that hump. You know, a lot, a lot of people thought that it was going to be last year, but it didn't happen. This was going to be the year for them in their, in their eyes, I guess. But with Adi being out, I'm not going to say I'm going to count them out, but somebody else has to take up the slack. Do I believe they have somebody who can? I think there's no choice in the matter. You got to have shorty throw. You got to have slasher throw. I don't know if that's going to happen throughout the season because he wasn't here last season, but I think that that's the only option they have left if they want to make it back to where they were last year. And, yes, Hollywood just asked if, if he got hurt, he threw today. Yes, we just got I got a picture sent to my phone that Adi is out four to six weeks, a picture of him with a cast on. We're going to have to confirm it, but that's what our source is telling us. Um, Pig said, ghosts look like Larry Holmes for what I see because of my man. <laughs> That's crazy because you do. I still think he looks like uh, uh, Arnold on drugs. But, um, nah, see, now nah, he's on drugs. You yeah, see that? So, Come on. That's a downgrade from what you said last time. Yeah, yeah. you just Arnold with problems. <laughs> so now we're going to talk, like I said, Adi out, the bad man, UFL, quarterback of the year, 46 weeks is what we're hearing. But... The only good part of the injury that I'm hearing is it's his left hand. It's not his throwing hand, but we got to confirm. We'll see how that goes. Now, into the Super Friends get his game. We're going to announce Super Friends sign Red. Red was supposed to play mm -hmm. a wide member last season. Yeah. Didn't. Came in and played with Super Friends, and they used their last eight player spot and used it on Red. And I think that that is an interesting. Obviously, it's a good pickup no matter what, but to see how Red fits into this type of offense, one thing I could say is it makes sense because this is a team that likes to run, and that's one thing that Red does pretty much in spades. This is what he does. He makes guys miss on the field when you throw passes to him or if he runs the ball or anything like that. This is his style of play, so I think that he fits right into the Super Friends team. He's also a dangerous return man. Yeah. Shannon's the most dangerous man in the game yes. for kick return. There's nobody better than him. But he's up there. Yeah. Chris is also up there from Super Friends. Yes. And they got both guys. That's so why that's I said gonna he fits. that's going to be dangerous yes. to have both guys. You know, they got a lot of other good return men. Brown is a good return man. But having Red and now you got Chris, watch that reverse. Watch a big play because both guys got speed. And um, Ghost is only growing here. It's only growing that fro to tease Jay about having hair. <laughs> That's true. I believe so, too, Pig. Everybody knows I got a problem growing hair, and um, Ghost is doing it as a joke. And you see, he picked it out to look even better. Mine is coming in w one day. It'll be coming in. <laughs> one day. Sarge is online. Congratulations to him. He called it a career, retired, good quarterback, spent a season in the UFL. Yes. And we want to congratulate him on that. And one more thing. Congratulations to two teams. Rebels, last week, winning a chip in the A division. Congratulations to them. 
Great game. Rep City winning the chip in Casino. They're the eight champs. They went out. They won the chip. Congratulations to them. Um, I got congratulations say to UTF. Yes, winning the C two chip in BQFL. A lot of teams bring home chips between the last two weeks. Yeah, so congratulations to all those teams. It's unfortunate that UTF didn't win in the fall championship in the BQFL right. on Saturday. But, you know, they make up for it somewhat. And the C2, you know, they got to come home with at least one chip. And that's exactly what happens for them. Congratulations to those guys. But now it's time to win yeah. UFL chips. That's a lot of money on the line. Yeah. So we're going to jump into the game right now. Let's go. First down, Dion gets the ball. He's going to hand it off to Chris, who, who runs for a big gain in the first down. Next down, Dion with a short pass to Red. Shed, sh Red shakes not one. Not two, but three guys runs it in for a touchdown, and that has to be a top five play with the guy on his first catch. He makes something happen. Touchdown, great play. One of the best plays that I've seen in this league. That's a Rico play, which Rico did in the championship yeah. against Carver last year. Red with the same type of play. And I got to say, this play actually outshines the Rico play. The only difference is Rico's play was in the championship. Right. And, and here, he shakes these guys pretty much on his own. No blockers needed. That's a Barry Sanders caliber play right here. You do a short pass here and just let him ca um, take, take, take care of the play. This is what happens here. Shakes all these guys. They have no chance of getting them. And he is here to play for I this I don't first know team. if that was better than the Rico play. We're going to let Chad Judge, who have this show up on Friday, we'll show both plays and we'll let the fans pick which is the better play. Leave your comments. You it's going to be it's going to be up on Facebook. Yes. I say Rico's is better. And I say Red's, Red's is better. better. We're going to see. Let the fans judge on which one was better. What up, Wise? What's up, brother? What's going on? 6 nothing. Red already impacting the game. Gives them the lead. First down. Reggie throws deep to track stall. Ball sails left. Picked off by Jigger. Giving the ball back to Super Friends. And listen, I know Jigger gets lost up on defense with Super Friends. He's a physical guy. He's not really known for picking off the ball. But if you make a play like this, he can take it. I don't know what Reggie saw, but he wasn't an open guy. Jigger with the pick. I mean, I'm not going to take away that much from him. I've seen him take, um, pick off the ball before. I've seen him pick the ball off and run it back before. So. He's not really known as a yes, guy. Yes, but my point He's is. more of a physical. Yes, that's He's his style. Out, but that doesn't guy. mean that if you don't throw, if you throw it in the vicinity, He's not going to make a play and come down with right. the ball. So either way, he is a defender that you have to watch out for, regardless of what. Jigger making a big play for his defense here. After getting the first down, Deion throws a Prince ball on the sideline for a nice game. Fourth down, Deion throws a Prince, cut it in the right of the end zone, off target, incomplete, turnover on downs. Great stop by them guys. And right here, they make a stand on defense. They, they make sure, even though they made a mistake on offense, they lock up on defense and, and take away any opportunity for Super Friends to get anything going on their, on their second drive of the game. Now they have the opportunity to make something happen before Super Friends took the game away. Second down, Reggie throws to Jamie in the middle, incomplete. The receiver should have slid to the left. He don't. Third down, Reggie gets sacked by A.B. Get his after punt. A.B. said he's breaking that sack record. That's what he told me. He has one. Yeah. 14 more. Tied. 15 to, to break it. I don't think he's going to do it. I think he's out of his mind. Listen, but, he he's <laughs> Listen, but I'm going to say this. Reggie is not a running quarterback, and they have no blockers for him right now. So he's an easy target for any giver right now because Reggie is not necessarily known as a mobile quarterback. He can get you a few yards if he has to, but he has no way to go here. Nobody is short on this play. He hasn't had, he didn't have a target, and that's why by the time A.B. was trying to come in, there was nothing that Reggie could have did but get the get sack. Third down, Deion gets blitzed by Hollywood, who's blocked by Kenny. Deion throws deep to Prince Mo in the end zone for the touchdown. If you look here, Prince Mo is left unguarded. B-Roy is going to get the two-point conversion, putting him up 14-0. Now, Prince Mo is the reigning offensive player of the year. How many touchdowns last year? I, I believe. 12? Yes. Something like that. We'll, yes. we'll have the numbers We'll better. confirm, yes. But how are you left unopened? I mean, how are you left unguarded? I mean, I don't know if them getters are doing their homework. I know they don't have the, the top players, but they have Chris. He's a good player. They have Trackstar. He was a starting 
corner in the UFL last year in for the All Star game. game. Yes. How do you forget Prince Mo leaving one of them? Well, ask every team that played against him, but called in the championship and in the playoffs. I mean, nobody guarded him last year. So at the end of the day, is this man has the ability to disappear on the field? I mean, we see him on the camera, but none of the defenders see him cutting across the field. He's right there. Somebody guard him, please. I'm begging you because it's too easy for this man. After getting the first down, Reggie throws to 83 on the sideline for a decent game. Second down, Reggie throws to Jamie in the middle for a nice game. Last down, Reggie finds Henry cutting the back of the end zone for the touchdown. Jamie gets the extra point, 14-7. That's Reggie going back to the old Reggie. Chopping up the field, finding his man for the touchdown. And when he's comfortable, he's going to make plays. And the thing, the thing about the last drive was he didn't have the time to make anything happen. He has time here. They get out, or they get open in certain routes, and they give Reggie a target. And that is why he was able to chop down the field and finally get the touchdown here. Great pass by Reggie. 14-7. Last play before the half, Deion tosses up. Incomplete. Halftime, 14-7. And I would say it's a good Decent start for the Super Friends. You know, Red showing right off the gate that he's going to be a playmaker throughout the season. He fits right into his team, right in with this team, you know, making plays, making guys miss. And I think that was the one thing I took away from the half. You know, obviously, Prince Mo being unguardable is something that we haven't, we've already seen throughout the last season. We're seeing it again here. So those are the main two things that I've seen from the Super Friends so far, and it's looking good for them. Now, them getters, they were shorthanded. We know that. But from what I've seen, this team needs playmakers. They were big when they had Megatron. Rubio, two big players. They had Swiss at one time. They had Shannon at one time. This team had playmakers, but they didn't have a quarterback. They went out and got a quarterback, now they, they don't have playmakers. playmakers. Yes. Hollywood, hopefully the guys that he got coming that's not here this week would be it because he's not going to win with this team. No. Trackstar's a good player. Hollywood is a good player. They need a superstar. They don't have it right now in his offense. And one thing I'm going to say is when Megatron was able to, because attendance for Megatron was the main problem right. for this team. And when Megatron was on the field for them getters, in every game that he played in the regular season, they won. So he's pretty much, they are pretty much undefeated when Megatron is on the field in the regular season. Right. So that's something that you got to consider when you look at this them get a team. Am I saying that Megatron is their team? No, but he is that, that deciding factor for this team that makes a difference when it comes to them getting wins. Just imagine if Reggie was here when Megatron, Rubio, Los, when those guys was here. Yeah. Imagine what Reggie would have been able to do with them. I know they had one of the great wide receivers. I don't know his name, but he's playing ball now. Mm -hmm. Professional ball. Yeah. So he's not going to be coming anytime soon through the door. But I know they was leaning on him being there, but obviously he had a real good opportunity to play real ball. So we're not going to kill him for making that decision. Keep making everybody proud. Do yep. your thing, boy. But Hollywood got to go out and get some playmakers. Because if he think this team right here is going to win a chip, he got another thing coming. Get us get the ball. Get us with two incomplete passes after getting the first down. Third down, Reggie gets blitzed and sacked by Chris. Get us have to punt once again in our back. And again, this is Reggie not being, not having time in the pocket. Chris surprising him with that blitz coming from the sideline. Well, it seems like it seems like that is a theme for a lot of guys blitzing in today or in these games here. They're coming from the sideline, surprising the quarterback. He has no time to do anything, and that is why those are easy sacks here. They can't get nothing going because nobody's open on their offense. Last down, we're gonna get the ball to Super Friends. We're gonna go to last down. Last down, deal on four rush. Throws to B-Roy in the middle, who makes a nice catch, nice game for the first down. If you look here, Tracks on J will both watch Dion, even B-Roy wide open. B-Roy is like 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, I don't know how you can lose him, but they do. He makes a great catch for the first down. And this is no communication between these guys right here. Jeremy, um, Jamie and Trackstar have to communicate to see who's going to pick up who because it seems like on this route here, B-Roy comes, comes out and then he cuts to the right. Nobody adjusts. Nobody picks him up. It's like both of them are deciding who's going to guard him while both looking at the quarterback. And because of that, B-Roy is left wide open in his route for an easy play. Second down, Reggie gets the ball back. Second down, he gets sacked by A.B. Nobody's short. You see the frustration of Reggie. Second sack by A.B. He's almost there. 
No, he's not. He's got a lot more to go. But the way that he said if he could get two a game, he's going to break it. Sounds easy. We'll see. Bottom line, he gets sacked. He sacked Reggie right here. Well, Reggie's an easy target, like I said earlier in the game. He is not a mobile quarterback, so if he doesn't get the ball, do ball off, he's getting sacked. So it's either one of the two. It's either he's going to get the ball off to this receiver, or he's going to get sacked. It's like a player and playing in baseball. He's either going to hit a home run, or he's going to strike out. There's no in-between. So at the end of the day, it is what it is. Reggie's not mobile. What you doing? Played somewhat. Uh, wow, he said wiffle ball. That's crazy. Listen, yeah, yeah, yeah. at the end of the day, okay, yeah, yeah. I didn't win a championship like you did or whatever right. in baseball. So what? Listen, nobody remembers that championship anyway. But at the end of the day, okay, I didn't play on the same level as you, but that doesn't mean I don't know the game. So I can reference if I want. AB says everyone is an easy target for me, Ghost. <laughs> Listen, if he's able to prove it out there, I can't argue. So he had a couple sacks in his championship game. So listen. He knows what he's talking about in the end because he has those stats to prove it. Last down, Reggie can't connect with the receiver to get the first down. Turn over one down, giving the ball back to Super Friends, and they're not able to do anything with the ball. They're struggling on offensive to get his off. And that's because nobody's able to get open. There's no receiver standing out and making anything happen. They're not giving Reggie an easy target out there on the field, and that is why Reggie's struggling on certain plays. He'd rather take the sack than throw the pick. That's commendable as a quarterback, but that's still not getting anything going for your offense. Maybe at this point you got to take some type of risk because Getting sacked is not changing anything for you. Super Friends not able to do nothing. They're getting in the punt and giving the ball back to them getters. Them getters with the clock running out. Cannot get a first down. Pretty much end of the game. 14-7. Super Friends with the win. And the sad part is this was supposed to be a big game this week. But yep. obviously it was one-sided pretty much from the beginning of the game. And you saw... Get is having a lot of problems on their team. Attendance is most likely one of them, but they don't have any playmakers right now. Um, Reggie was not given any decent targets throughout the game, and that is why he struggled from the beginning to the end of the game. Super Friends are still moving. Haven't lost a game in the UFL in the regular season. They lost in the playoffs in the Final Four, but regular season-wise, this team has not lost a game. They added these players, and we're told that they signed Mace. Mace is their next player. I mean, he's not an A player, mm -hmm. good offensive player, not a great defensive player, but he's a good offensive player. And you're bringing Mace to an offense that was one of the top offenses in the league last year. Yeah. You add another weapon for Dion. And that's just, that's just the most troubling thing for a lot of defenses out there. This was already a hard defense to defend all against. Offense to defend. I mean, all, a hard offense to defend, you know, already. And now they're adding more and more offensive players. Red is a two-way player, but I would say that he is more known on offense than on defense. He's a big playmaker on offense. Now they're adding Mace. They already have Kenny. They have, they have Prince Mo. They have AB. They have B-Roy. They have um, Golo. I mean, Chris. Chris. How many more guys can you add on this offense? I think it's going to be a problem on who Deion gets the ball to because it's going to be too many targets out there. And them getters came into the UFL was let's say that one of the top teams. And now you, you can't, you know, label them a top team anymore. They're not up there with YMM, IOD, Carver, Super Friends. They're not in that caliber. This team has to turn it around and make guys remember the team they were when they first got here. That's becoming an issue. Hollywood got to get players. He's able to do it. If he really gets into it, I think he was so focused on getting the quarterback. He got the quarterback, but he doesn't have enough playmakers on the scene. And hopefully, like he said before, with the guys not being here, that they're supposedly coming next week and everything, maybe that is true. Hopefully that is true because they need it to be true. If they keep going throughout the season with this team here, I don't see them going anywhere. I'm just going to say it I right mean, now. I lost in the first round last year to Valleys. But the point is, again, this was a team that before they were able to make it to the conference finals, getting beat only by Carver Mob. So this is a team that made it, you know, close to the dance. They were there. They were in the vicinity of the dance, but they came up short. Now it seems like every year they've, they been, taking a step back. they've been taking steps back, steps back, steps back. And it seems like guys are just not showing up for the team anymore. Two seasons ago they lost to Rep City. 
in the game that people picked them to win. Yes. Last year they lost to Violators in the game people thought that they would win. And now, you know, they got to get playmakers. Hollywood can do it. This is a good team. He's a good leader. He's definitely a guy you want to follow. He brings the cards together. He got them a quarterback. I'm just surprised more guys don't want to play with getters because they're a good team. And you have a Hall of Fame quarterback throwing you the football. And I would think that having Reggie on his team throwing for you is going to draw the guys in. But, you know, it's the first game. I'm not going to necessarily say that they don't have anybody yet. But if the second game, the third game rolls along and they still don't have these guys on the field, I think it's going to be a problem because time is running out for them where they can still remain eligible for this team. So they got to make it between those two games in order for it to matter for this team. Well, that's it. We're going to wrap up the show. We have five games. Everything opens up next week. Everybody will be playing. The three-time champs will be back in the league. Carver, that we'll be playing next week. IOD will be playing next week. Uh, 99 will be playing. The U will be playing. Main event. Everybody will be on the board. And we get more. We get a chance and an opportunity more to see what the team's got, which means more work for us. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to complain because, you know, more work is most likely good work for right. us. So at the end of the day, you know, we enjoy doing it. It's exciting to see all of these guys, a lot of guys playing on different teams. Yes, sir. Certain teams are looking completely different than they were last year. And then some complete different teams, new teams that's showing up in this league, making a lot of things interesting. So I can't wait to see how things go throughout the remainder of the season. Hollywood asked what's the new teams, and new teams have been confirmed. It was underrated and main event. Those are the two teams that joined the league. Those are the teams that reached out, and they're in. Yes. So that's 20. That's $7,000 on the line. And an opportunity to play at the best championship site in the world. I would say Yankees, old Yankee Stadium, yeah. 161, where everybody's not able to play because pressure busts pipes. And there's always pressure on that Yankee, um, at, at Yankee Stadium, you know. There's a history there, so no matter if the, the, the old stadium is, is there or not, the point is the atmosphere will always remain there. The spirit of those big games will always remain there. And I know that anybody who plays in that those games, those championship games, feels that spirit of competition that's been there for, uh, for decades upon decades, you know, on, in, that, on those very, in that very spot. And this is the place to be. We're not taking away anything from Brooklyn, yes. meaning when UFL was in Brooklyn, yeah. you know, we had Punisher's champs, we had Rose G's champs, but we're counting what's going on in the Bronx. Yeah. And VR, champions, Carver, three-time champions. That's all we're talking about, what's going on here. That 161 stage is amazing, it's addictive, and we're going to see who's the next team to get there now. And there's a lot of things to look forward to on that field. The atmosphere, the all-star game, in my opinion, was just as exciting as a championship game. You know, of course, he gets to brag that they, the East won East finally. Up. After three straight losses, you know, this is going to be a fourth if Ramsey didn't bail y'all guys out because Adi didn't do it. Let's just say that. Adi didn't do it. So, again, Ramsey bailed y'all out. So we'll see if they're able to win another championship. I doubt it. He's but. still a bad man, though. And I can't say that for four to six weeks. Ah, the bad. I know that's man. gonna hurt you. That's gonna hurt you. <laughs> so we're gonna have to see. We're gonna wrap up the show right now. Hopefully, you liked it. You're gonna get to see the not top five plays. The top five plays. Mm -hmm. You know, you already saw the you got moss segment when we frame people getting mossed. Yeah. So hopefully you enjoyed it. We're gonna wrap up the show right now. Much love to you guys. See you next week. Real Tough Talk. Back in the building. UFL. Back in the building. We're going to see y'all guys. Hit me up soon. We'll be on the side. Talk to All you right. guys later. Talk to you guys later. So for me, Stephen J., my partner, Ghost, Real Tough Talk. We're out of here. Talk to y'all guys on the side.